a win tonight, the Falcons would be 4-1 in one of their last five games. So tonight's focus needs to be on a couple of things. They need to continue to establish the team identity and continue to work things inside. Now, as far as keys to the game, we'll get to that in just a second here. Tonight, of course, they're taking on the boys' team, Devontae Parker's Harding Fine Arts Academy Firehawk team. Now, they are just 215 on the season, but the game they won the last uh, couple of weeks ago was the key game that got them into district seating so that they could participate in tonight's district championship game. I'm not just a scientist on the OSSAA's uh, how they do the seating because someone's going to say, oh, how does a team with a record of 2-15 and 15 get there? Well, it's about who you win within your district. So if the teams in the district have a low winning percentage, well, then you can get there with a couple of wins in district, and that's how the Firehawks were able to do so tonight. Their last outing, they took on Crooked Oak earlier this, uh, earlier this week. They lost to them 67-24. to Now, actively on the Firehawks roster tonight, I will be here to tell you that there's only about six or seven players available tonight. So we'll see how competitive they're looking to be tonight as they'll be taking on the Mighty Falcons. As far as what to expect from the Falcons tonight, if I had to give you three keys to victory tonight, one, you got to be sound on the fundamental side of basketball tonight. In other words, take your time, set up the offense, run the offense, get your positions, do the things you need to do. Know the floor, space the floor, do all the things you need to do as you get ready for uh, going into regionals next week. Now, you got to play smart, no foul trouble. Again, a lot of the Falcons will be out tonight. Jaden Nickens will not play tonight. Zaire Fisher will not play tonight. And Kamarian Kudjo will not play tonight. So without those guys, again, you have another roster of uh, also Christopher Clay will not play tonight. So you've got a lot of guys out tonight for the Falcons. So therefore, as they are looking to get healthy for this playoff run coming up, now you've got a different set of guys coming in there. So foul trouble is a big thing. So you've got to turn to your veterans, which will be Carlos Strong. Chance Davis and of course William Mays to try and hold things down while your team continues to play you want to get in again sound fundamentals it starts off with those guys finally my last key to the game would be rebound the ball the Falcons did an outstanding job rebounding in both the wins as part of their win streak these last few games and they did that by seeing aggressive play and everybody attacking the ball not only did Zaire Fisher have seven rebounds uh, last game Carlos Strong obviously had six rebounds last game. So when you start talking about guys, Chance Davis had five rebounds last game. That's what you need. Guards willing to go down low and rebound and do the little things that will help you get a win tonight. So three keys to the game. Sound fundamental, play smart, no foul trouble, and rebound the ball will be my keys to the game tonight. So we'll go ahead and see how things develop as the night goes on. But you're going to hear some new names tonight that are available tonight. Guys like Donovan Knight, who's probably going to be in the starting lineup for the Falcons this evening. And also Dominic Weich, who's been starting lately, helping provide some balance to the team. As we have also received word that Robert Wilson is unavailable tonight. So you're talking about guys who are contributors to this team. And if they're going to win a state title this year, the Falcons, they're going to need those guys getting healthy again. So it's about time to go ahead and get things jumping off here. And we'll stop for let the public address announcer go ahead and get us set with starting lineups here in just a second. But again, if you're listening online tonight, if you're listening on the radio tonight, thank you for listening. But you can also join us, the live action stream on the Millwood Falcon YouTube page. And we'll be happy to talk all about those things tonight. So we'll get ready for starting lineups here in just a moment as we get things jumping off tonight. On to districts next week. Today, tonight, next week, we start regional play. So for the Falcons, what does that look like? The Falcons, both girls and boys, will be playing in Jones next week. So, hey, it's just a short drive away, a little bit away from the city, but at least they are going to have some action. Uh, we remember going to regionals last year in uh, Shakota last year uh, for the Falcons, and then, of course, ending up going to regional uh, area, which will be once again in Vertigris. So we're looking forward to bringing all that action to you again as we will follow the Falcons throughout this playoff run and going to be eagerly wi willing to bring you all the fun of basketball here tonight. 
So, again, thank you so much for joining in and tuning in to us right now. We're going to see here and see if they got the PA announcer ready to go as we turn to look to the floor here tonight. What do you expect tonight? Expect Chance Davis back in the starting lineup tonight. He's back in the starting lineup. It's going to allow the team to get into a better rotational flow. That's obviously what's going to happen. Then you've got the guy, William Mays, who has evolved his game. I mean, of course, this team would look completely different if Ricky Hunt was still here, Ricky Hunt advancing and going on to, to play uh, to college early in this fall. So you got this team still in transition, learning to play, and then you have key players out. So, again, consistency is what you want. So here we go. Let's turn it over to PA announcer right now. Here we go to Ivory Towns. Two outstanding Thank you. 
number five is uh, Peyton Greer. I think they're trying to get some things worked out here with the scores table there. Go ahead and confirm the starting lineup for the night for your Falcons. Donovan Knight, William Mays, Chance Davis, Dominic Weich, and Carlos Strong. And tonight, going against the Firehawks of Harding Fine Arts Academy. Firehawks, uh, again, in their last 10 games, 2-8 in, in their last 10 games for the Falcons, 6-4 in, in their last 10 games. So it's going to be important tonight for the Falcons to play at a high level regardless of how many players or how it's going on because this you only as good as the last game you play. So going to be jumping up in center court right now. It looks like it's going to be Peyton Greer and William May is going to jump. Ball goes center. Here we go. Ball's up. Tip controlled by the Falcons. Here comes Chance Davis. Chance Davis to William Mays. May setting up the offense right now. The Firehawks are in a 2-3 zone. William Mays. Chance Davis lines up a three-point shot, and he drains it on a Saturday night. Chance Davis gets it going early on. Going to be nearly stolen there. Ball passed to the outside to Cannon. Cannon fires up a three-point shot. Shot no good by Cannon. Rebound pulled down by Dominic Weich. Working the ball around Chance Davis. Gives it up to Donovan Knight, who lines up a three and laces him. Assist by Chance Davis, and the Falcons jump out to a 6-0 lead. 7-12 to go early in this contest. Working the ball around. Ball fake. Drive inside. Three-point shot attempt is no good again. Rebound pulled down this time by William Mays. It's important to note, as all Falcon coaches do, Dominic White with a short corner jump shot. Nice, easy shot. Off the assist from Carlos Strong that time. It's important to note for the Falcons, as all coaches do, as I was about to say, is they stress and want to emphasize the importance of minutes and opportunities. So if you want to see some action in postseason play, then you need to leave something good on tape tonight for the coaches to say, hey, maybe I can turn to you when we need you during the playoffs and get some good play from you. William Mays in the corner, double teamed. Going to go cross court to Donovan Knight. Knight swings it back up top to Chance Davis. Chance Davis from the left wing, three-point shot. No good rebound. End up in the hands of White, who puts it in. 
Nice one. Dominic White with the put back two. Nice job by the Falcons. Up 10 early. 6.09 to go. Open up with a 10-0 run. Working the ball around from the left wing. Driving inside. Ball's knocked loose. Steal on the floor right now by Donovan Knight. And on the other end, Chance Davis tries to get the two. Tries to get the flush. It is no good. Rebound pulled down by the Firehawks. Inside shot is going to be blocked. By Carlos Strong on that last possession. Driving inside, throwing it back up top. Turnover on the inside. Working the ball around is Hudson. Hudson is, has it deflected. Carlos Strong tries to save it right in front of the scorer's table. Not able to do so. It will be Firehawk basketball. Right now, the Firehawks are playing with a lot of tempo. And for them, that's really going to be difficult for them to maintain throughout the course of the game because it's actually playing into the favor of the Falcons right now. You're talking about the Falcons coming out. Dominic White with four, Chance Davis with three, and Donovan Knight with three. You're talking about a full, you know, contribution from everybody. William Mays is rebounding and also assisting. The Falcons are moving the ball early, and right now it's catching them off guard, and you can honestly say that right now it is a punch in the mouth. So great job by the Falcons establishing who they are, their own identity, and doing it at a high level. That's, the question is, you came out with that with 5.32 to go. Can you maintain that for four periods of action tonight? You don't want to let down. You want to play your best ball. But again, as I said just a few minutes ago, you're only as good as the last game you played. So how do you do that? You got to do it by executing for all four periods. And we'll see if the Falcons are going to be willing enough to do that over the course of this evening. So back to live action, back to the, lot, to the floor right now. It will be Firehawk basketball inbounding right in front of the scorer's table. So here we go. The ball back in the hands now of Hudson. Firehawk still looking for a basket. 5.25 to go in the first. Williams. Lazy pass almost stolen that time. Cross court over to the left wing. Retrieved by Hudson. Hudson, William Mays on him is going to draw a con draw a foul right there. William Mays pressuring him nearly 50 feet away from the basket. You can question whether that was a foul or not or the aggressiveness by Mays on that one. Greer going to get a ball in the hands of Cannon. Cross court over to Hudson. Hudson back up top to Williams. Ball's deflected. They got to chase it down, and the Hawks do. Williams. The ball's going to be stolen by Chance Davis, who comes up with a steal. Chance Davis gets the steal and the deal. Two points for Chance Davis. He's got five in the period. 12-0 Falcons. Steal. Donovan Knight. On the other end, Chance Davis again. Off the Donovan Knight steal and assist. Kind of like extra value meals tonight. Getting fries and a burger tonight. Somebody going to have to give me a drink. Working the ball around outside. Bounce pass over. The pressure. Free throw jump shot falls for Hudson. So 14 to 2 right now. 4.06 to go. Donovan Knight on the right wing. Back up top to Chance Davis. William May steps into a three point shot from the left wing. Shot no good. And going to be contact underneath. Dominic White was fouled on the rebound attempt. So that's going to be, foul's going to be called on Dragary Williams. So now Chance Davis to inbound the ball. Gets it into William Mays. William Mays fires it down low to Carlos Strong. And they're going to catch Carlos Strong for steps. He got that pass <laughs> inbounded on the block to him so fast, he wasn't quite ready for it. So now the Falcons fall back, no pressure this time. And now Hudson has it, nearly turns it over. Spin move, three-point shot attempt from the left wing is no good. Rebound pulled down by Knight. And then Knight throws it up, and Carlos Strong throws it down on the other end. What force Carlos Strong has. And he shows his vertical ability. As a defensive tackle, y'all, with a vertical jump. And then going with the Euro to the basket, 
Shot no good that time. Rebound pulled down by William Mays. Mays looking for some space to operate. Kicks it over to Dominic White, who lets go a three-point shot. He can't get it to fall. Goes over the backboard, no good. It's going to be a turnover, and it will be Firehawk ball. So substitutions coming in for the Falcons right now. So Donovan Knight takes his seat, as well as Carlos Strong. As Kelvin, Kelston Young comes in the game. And so as well does Jamari Moore. So on the other, in the live action, the Firehawks turn the ball over. So Mays now has it. Over to Chance Davis. Chance Davis back up top to Young. Cross court over to Mays. And then letting go a short corner shot is no good that time by Moore. Contact underneath the goal. It's going to be team foul. As the, as the foul, foul is going to be called on Hudson. So Young going to inbound it. Team foul situation. Falcons with one. Harding with two. Jump stop inside. Going vertical. Trying to finish at the goal. Jamari Moore trying to show you he got some sauce in his game. He's going to say he they say he was fouled with contact going to the lane. So team foul number three now. So Moore going to the free throw line, shooting two. Dribbles. Spins. First shot. Nothing but string music. Nice form. As the Falcons extend their lead now to 15 points. So Tommy Webb comes in the game for Cornell Cannon. So one more free throw coming. Spins it. Shot is up. And he knocks it down again. It's going two for two. So working the ball around. Ball's knocked loose by Kelston Young as the Falcons employer full court pressure here. Jump stop on the jump shot, no good. Pulled down by Weich. Weich throws it ahead to Chance Davis. Kelston Young fires up a three-pointer from the left wing and he drains it. So Firehawks are going to turn it over. And right now, I have to say, if you're living in the Edmond area and you see clouds in the skies, it's just the Falcons shooting three-point shots tonight. Just letting you know right now, they are shot. They have shot three, six of them, knocked down three, shooting 50% from three right now. 2.05 to go in the first, 21 to two. And then coming in, Chance Davis on call, walks and knocks down another three-point shot. 24 to two. Ball's going to be stolen by William Mays. And then he gets it up to Chance Davis, who finishes on the other end. And coming back, what hustle by William Mays, getting all the way back on the defensive end, blocking the shot of Israel Manuel on the other end. Give that man, he should, that, that should have been worth two blocks. Just the effort that William Mays put forth. Substitution as William Mays comes out, and now Dewan Vaughn comes in the game for Mays. Working the ball around, 26 to two. Ball on the right wing. Ball fake. Falcons double team. Ball back in the hand now of Greer. Greer, sidestep, three-point shot, no good. Hits off the rim and goes out of bounds. So 26 to two, the Falcons up by 24, 118 to go. So substitution. Looks like Chance Davis comes out. And into the game now is Mark Presley. So Presley now has it. Young, up top to Vaughn. 
Inside to Moore. Moore getting called for steps on the inside. Working the ball around. Hawks. Going to get called for steps. Trying to get the ball in again. Full court pressure as Coach Jeffries has employed early on. Peyton Greer turns it over. So 55.6 seconds to go. Kelston Young now has it. Young. Vaughn tries to track it down. And now the Firehawks have it. And driving inside. Driving contact and is going to score the basket. Goes to Gary Williams who scores it. He's going to score the basket giving him their fourth point. 43.2 seconds to go. Williams. Shot is up. And he didn't even draw iron on that one. So he misses the free throw. It goes out of bounds, and it will be Falcon basketball. Kelston Young comes across half court. Over to Moore. Back up top to Vaughn. Kelston Young fires a three shot. No good that time. Trying to hit it with the runner. Back over to Young, who fires up another three-point shot. He can't get it to fall. Dominic Weich tries to get it, tries to pick up the trash, can't get it that time. So a couple shots there by Young, but great rebounding again by the Falcons, but not able to get it. Now Vaughn has it with 6.4 seconds to go. Kelston Young drives inside, up in the air, and scores as time expires after one. And the Falcons lead by the score of 28 to two. We'll be right back. I'll have some Gary Woods, folks, to get his thoughts about the first on the second on the other side of the break. And we'll be right back. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by Super Prep. You're going to feel a puff of air. Jong's Optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our 2 o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric technician to keep an eye on it all. The dilation drops. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back courtside, or above courtside. Maurice Prince and Gary Woods now here. Gary, you know, this is one of those games where I said sound fund fundamentals, play smart, no foul trouble, rebound the ball. Because you're only as good as the last game you played. And so regardless of the opponent, regardless of the circumstance, you got to come out and play Falcon basketball. Yeah, you're right. And... As I'm looking at the score, 20, you, you said at the break 28-2. I two, guess they got 28. it. Yes, they did off the off the, uh, the the shot that he put in. Okay. Well, anyway, it goes. I mean, in the first period, 28-4. to four, I mean, this is starting off as as a, a lopsided affair. And then, of course, I'm looking at the lineup of the Falcons, and you know, we're playing some younger players tonight, which is good, and it's good that they're getting this experience at the district level. So, um, hats off to. Coach Jeffries and, and these young men for, um, again, having this opportunity to play this, this, this district game. This is a district game, right? Yeah, it's a district championship yeah. game, right. And, you know, shot up by the Falcons by Weich was not able to knock it down that time, and it ends up being uh, with the Firehawks basketball. One of the things I, I always find interesting here is, as all coaches do, at Millwood, whatever you put on tape is an important. So a lot of these guys may not see playoff action or playoff minutes, Gary, but it's important to note that if you had, you know, if there's an opportunity, you want to show that you're worthy to get some, yes. act, get some minutes. Yes. So, like, for instance, I'm watching Dominic Watch. He's a starter typically with, uh, you know, the varsity. And, you know, this is a great opportunity for him to get a lot of minutes. And... Um, and, and to help, you know, get himself in a rhythm. 
Um, he, he has some game experience, but he's never really had to play like a full game. I think this is a night where you can leave him out there, see how well he manages himself, manage the foul, see how he gets himself in position because he's a guy that we're going to need to help us as we, you know, try to advance from this district into, what, a regional? That's right. And so, so Jamari Moore comes out, Donovan Knight returns, but keep going. So, so yeah, I mean, we need him to, to step up and, and, and show what he can do. Donovan Young back over to Kelston Young, who fires it inside to Dominic Weich. He's not able to finish, but good rebound by Mark Presley. He gets able to get it back a couple of times on that one. Da Vaughn fires up, but again, nice work on the blocks there by Presley. Yeah. Showing some effort there, Gary. No, you're right. And, but the only thing is, is that, you know, we got to get a little bit better angles, right, off the glass and, and get the ball inside the rim. You know, we got to score the basketball. We're taking plenty of shots. We're just not scoring. All right. So now, Firehawks with the basketball. Greer has it. Oh, Ball's stolen. going to be deflected by Vaughn. Kelston Young drives inside, drops, drops it down low. Kelston Young recovers, fires up a three from the corner. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Vaughn. Yep. Falcons are definitely dominating on the glass right now. So now, firing up. Good a shot. nice short corner jump shot by Dominic Weich. Right. Showing us a little bit of range tonight, Dominic is. Yeah, he is. I mean, that's exactly what we need to see. We need to see him out there um, looking at his, his range, taking those shots, perhaps, you know, getting used to banging around a little bit more down in the low post. I mean, he's a pretty nice-sized player. He looks like he's at every bit of list of 6'4", almost 6'5". Nice. So oh, Presley's going to get called for steps. He, for steps, he shuffled, yeah. his, uh, shuffled his pivot foot when he got, got set on the box. All right. Full court pressure being still extended by Jeffries. Getting across the timeline barely. Intercepted. By Weich. By Weich. Coming up with the steal. And on the other uh, end, in the Dominic end Weich tries to get, he does get the steal and the deal. I mean, he's going for the extra value meal. He gets the steal, yeah. the deal. Now he wants the drink to go with it. Well, cool. So what do we say about those free throws? Only free if, if you, you make them. So let's see if he can get the free throw. He's got eight points in the first half here, Dominic Weich does. Spins it. Shot is up. Front yeah. rims no good that time. He hurried that free throw a little bit. He should have come to his toes, followed through just a little bit more. Wouldn't have rimmed out. He probably could have gotten the shooter's roll. Ball. Back. Oh, back court. Of, yeah. Back court violation is Cornell Cannon threw it back court. So substitution now as Jamari Moore comes to the game, giving Dominic Weich a breather. So Donovan Knight, Kelston Young, Dwan Vaughn, Mark Presley, and Jamari Moore on the floor. Moore drives inside, channeling his inner Carlos Strong, wasn't able to get that <laughs> shot to fall. Working the other side, driving into contact, going to fire up a, a contested shot there was Williams. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Vaughn. Vaughn gets it over to Knight, to Kelston Young, who fires up a three from the right wing. No good, but Presley picks up the change. And Puts scores. It back, yeah. I'm seeing some definitely good things out of Mark Presley. So the ball rolls around, and it finally ends up in the hands back of the Firehawks on a scramble oh, trail. I think there. that's what you call a travel. That should have been a travel there, but they <laughs> let him get away with it as Cannon scores the two there. Thirty-six to six, Falcons up by thirty. Moore over to Vaughn. Vaughn looks at the three, drives inside, pulls up. Shot is blocked. He gets his own rebound, then muscles his way inside. He can't get it to fall. Firehawks absorb the rebound there. Yeah, just didn't quite go up strong enough. Need to get stolen again by the Falcons. Up, oh, throw the ball away. Got a little excited. Pass was a little long. So substitutions coming out. So William Mays returns to the game as Vaughn comes out. Now at 36 to 6, and we see William Mays coming back in. This is basically, you know, uh, 
management, right? This is player management that we're seeing. And you might be wondering, okay, why are you bringing back a William Mays? And that's a travel there, but they missed that one as well. But you got to keep those, those uh, starters, those varsity players dialed in. I'm going to call a travel as Peyton Greer tried to go with the Euro, but you're right. Yeah, you got to keep those guys dialed in. You, you don't want them to think that this is just, you know, something that, that – where they, they can't get any value out of it. This is about, you know, them also getting some work, staying tuned up. And, again, regionals start next week. That's right. <laughs> so, right. And it's so. going to go from this level of play to a much higher level of play real quick. William Mays gets it over. Moore from three-point range, and he drains it from the corner. Assist by William Mays. Stolen and then again. Moore coming in, getting the steal. Fires it back to William Mays. Now Kelston Young has it. Young on the left wing. Gets it inside to Presley. Yeah. Who tries to get it. Tried to finger roll, but he steals it back. So William Mays working the offense around. Oh, and the three-point shot is blocked, but a it's foul. a foul called on that play. He's going to the line to shoot three. Jamari Looks like Moore. On Jamari Moore. No, I'm sorry, on Tregarry Williams. Jamari Moore to the free throw line shooting that. So that's team foul number five. Moore, who already has two free throws on the night, has good form back rims that one. He's got five points in the first half. See if the Falcons can eclipse 40 points right here. Spins, takes his time, shot is up, and it's much beautifully done. Yeah, much better for him by, by Moore. So Kelston Young comes out, so Dewan Vaughn comes back to the game. So Moore, who is shooting three at the free throw line, trying to go two of three. Not able to get it to fall that time. Yep, jump jump ball. ball situation, and it more than likely will remain with the Falcons here. Jump ball the call. So coming out goes more than That's Dominic White returns. White steps in for more. So Presley gets it inbounded to William Mays. William Mays, Presley pulls up short corner jump shot. Good form, no rebound up high by Dominic White, who gets it with a strong yeah. rebound and puts yeah. it in. White. That's a good effort by Weish. Weich with 10 first half points. Trap in the corner. Yeah, Hardy's having a difficult time getting that ball across court. And what happens is they're double teaming when the ball, I mean, again, they're trapping as soon as you right. touch the ball. You go into your action, that's when the double team hits you. And they're dribbling into the corner as well. Okay, a tip out. So now, so now we're trying to get this to work. Yeah, it looks like they're going to. What do we got here? Foul on, on, yeah, Dewan okay. Vaughn. So Dewan Vaughn getting called with the foul there. Three-point shot attempt is no good. Rebound by Vaughn. Vaughn fires it over to Mays. Mays to Weich. Mays over to Dominic Knight. Knight fires a three-point shot from the right wing. Shot no good by Knight. Stolen. Stolen. Two on one. And Presley goes with the right hand. Nice move. Up Couldn't and under. Finish. Dominic Weich. But Weich gets the rebound. Stolen again by the Falcons. So this time on the inbound play, William Mays comes in with the steal. And William's not even trying to score. He's just in there facilitating. Something that he does so well, and you could definitely tell the difference between how the Falcons are transitioning and how they're running their offense when he's in the game at point guard versus when there was someone else in the game. So Mays takes a seat. Kelston Young comes out with 1.30 to go in the first half of play. Yeah, William Mays checked in just to show him how it's done. <laughs> Firing the ball to the Up, box, and the it's going to be off, off the foot of Manuel. So it will be Falcon basketball again. 
44 to 6 is the score, 119 to go. Falcons dominating the first half of play here, but not in the fashion that you might think, but doing a great job of attacking and making it difficult for the Firehawks to get in any form of offensive flow. Vaughn working the ball up top, bounce pass inside. Oh, what a nice done. bounce pass to White. She's not able to finish inside. So trying to get the ball around with 51 seconds, and they do. Follow the ball inside and oh. get hit with contact. Yeah, that's going to be Gary a Gary Williams is going to get fouled. He's going to go to the free throw line. Let's see who's the fouls on. The foul's going to be called on foul Mark Presley. Yeah, he, bottled, he bodied them pretty good there. So team foul number five. Both teams have five fouls each. So Gary Williams already has two points on the night. This is the first of his two. So Moore comes in the game as Presley comes out. Second shot is true for Williams. 44 to 7, 40 seconds to go. Up top to Vaughn. Vaughn to Knight. White throws it back up top to Kelston Young. Over to Don McKnight. Domin Donovan Knight. Low post that right. right open. So Kelston Young dribbling up top with 21 on the clock. Dominic White fires it up to Vaughn. Vaughn's pass is deflected, recovered then by Moore with 14 on the clock. Moore over to Donovan Knight, inside to Kelston Young, who drives inside to the baseline, can't get it to fall, but Moore does. Yeah, good follow by Moore. Moore with eight first half points. One second to go at the end of the first half. It's 46 to seven. We'll come back and break down the first half Statistics, I'm sure we're going to have a ton of numbers to go into. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Maurice Prince. He's Gary Woods. This is Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by Super Prep. We'll see you in about five. Did you know Nissan EVs have traveled 8 billion miles? Just a quick trip to Pluto and back. And what did we learn along the way? Well, that an EV can take on the world, like the Nissan Leaf. It can move racing forward and take your breath away like the all-new Nissan Aria. We learned to make EVs that electrify. 8 billion miles driven by Leaf owners globally since 2010. Aria not yet available for purchase. Expected availability late fall. Subject to change. February is American Heart Month. Heart disease is a leading cause of death in the United States. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, obesity, and lack of exercise can increase your risk for heart disease. Men over 45 and postmenopausal women have a higher risk of coronary artery disease, or CAD. Black and Hispanic adults of all ages are at increased risk. CAD is the most common form of heart disease and a major cause of heart attack. CAD occurs when plaque builds up along the walls of the heart's arteries, causing them to narrow and limit blood flow. Your doctor can screen for heart disease using calcium scoring with cardiac CT, which can identify the presence, location, and extent of plaque buildup. Ask your doctor if you're at risk for coronary artery disease and find out if cardiac screening is right for you. For more information, visit radiologyinfo.org. That's radiologyinfo, one word, dot O-R-G. This health reminder is from the Radiological Society of North America. Hi, I'm Dr. Anita Chandra with today's tip for kids from the American Academy of Pediatrics. To keep your family healthy and safe, it's important to be ready if disasters happen. Develop a family communication plan. Make sure your family, including your children, know how to reach each other. Make a kit with first aid supplies, medicine, medical records, and comforting things for your child. Finally, talk about what to do when emergencies happen, like streets flooding, a power outage, or a fire. For more, visit HealthyChildren.org. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. I hate the struggle of tough, greasy messes on my stovetop. So I just freak, wipe, and I'm done. When I'm frustrated with stubborn bathtub soap scum, I just freak, wipe, and I'm done. 
Mr. Clean Clean Freak delivers an innovative cleaning experience with a powerful deep cleaning mist that starts working on contact to break down tough messes in seconds. Just freak, wipe, done. done. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp now for free information on how to get started today. InventHelp provides invention services that help everyday inventors get started with their idea. We have representatives nationwide who will explain the InventHelp process step by step. Over 10,000 patents have been secured through InventHelp's patent referral services. Our services include professional materials needed to showcase your invention and 3D animation and prototype modeling that help you demonstrate your idea. Get down to the details of your idea with a technical drawing. The InventHelp data bank includes thousands of companies who have agreed to review new ideas. We've been helping inventors since 1984. Let's help you next. Take advantage of the opportunity to get started today. Call 1-800-217-4380. That's 1-800-217-4380. Again, 1-800-217-4380. It's been tough talking to my doctor about constipation with belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. I finally laid all my symptoms out there and how they keep coming back. She said I may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. We agreed it's time to try something different. Linzess or linaclotide, is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. Linzess works differently than laxatives. It lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two years old. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. There could be more to your story with IBSC. Visit a doctor in person or online. Say yes to Linzess. Learn more at linzess.com or call 1-800-L-I-N-Z-E-S-S. -S. Sponsored by Abby and Ironwood Pharmaceuticals. My dad has a cold, but also has high blood pressure. That's why I got him Vicks NyQuil High Blood Pressure for fast, powerful nighttime relief. Unlike some... <laughs> pressure like my dad medicine use it directed welcome back to crossing christian that's where we happen to be tonight district championship night and we saw gary a dominant performance by the falcon boys team it wasn't the full roster they've just been able to uh, apply so much pressure and they have just been so good on so many other levels that they've been able to just dominate this game. Yeah, I mean, forcing a lot of turnovers, applying a lot of pressure uh, through the press break has been the key to a lot of their success. Uh, and then also, too, just simply making shots. You know, I mean, they put it up. I mean, they're getting a couple of second and third chance opportunities, capitalizing on it. And, you know, Harding just is not actually doing a very good job of getting that ball Past half court, half and, court, yeah. And then when they get it past half court, they're taking probably untimed shots. And yeah, that's, because that's they are all out of rhythm, and right. so they're pressing it, and leads to bad shots, turnovers, and, and bad right. situations. Right. The Falcons outscored Harding twenty-eight to two in the first, or twenty-eight to four, I should say, and then outscored them uh, eighteen to five in the second. And you're saying, well, eighteen to five—that's without the starters on the floor for right. the most part. And they've just been dominant in so many forms and fashions overall in the game. The Falcons shot 19 of 39, 49%, Gary. 5 of 14 from 3, 36%. Rebounds, they're out rebounding Harding by 14, 21 to 7. Mm -hmm. Turnovers, Falcons only have one first half turnover. And, and we talk about Harding, they've got nine points, they've got 14 turnovers. Right, they got so, more turnovers, turnovers than points. points. Wow. Yeah. So nine assists to two plus seven in that category. Free throw shooting. Both teams have been to the free throw line, you know, about five, six times a piece. Uh, Harding is shooting 60%. The Falcons only shooting 50%. But, I mean, those are all overall the numbers. The high-flying Falcon of the first half is Dominic White with 12. Yeah. And he's been able to pick up those long shots and put them back. He's done a great job of establishing himself on the block and finding easy baskets. To me, he's one of those bigs that need 
opportunities. I know we're doing it tonight without Robert Wilson playing tonight. Right. No Zaire Fisher tonight. No Camarion Cudjo and no Jaden Nickens. Mm-hmm. So and also uh, no uh, no Clay tonight either. Christopher Clay. So Chris when Clay. you t- when you take all those guys out, that r- r- almost right there is another starting lineup. <laughs> yeah, it is. It definitely is. In, you know, as I look at the numbers, Mo, the, the statistics: forty nine percent from the field, thirty six percent from three point. The rebounding numbers probably are a little bit more robust than typical. But other than that, this is about what you see the varsity does even when everybody's, you know, there. So the good news is is that the performance is consistent regardless of whether it's the younger players versus the older players. But but more importantly, I mean, it seems like other than the fact that we got 46 first-half points, that's atypical. But in terms of, of the percentages, it, it looks pretty consistent with this Falcon team. It does. Uh, it, it lies a bit on, on the numbers. I think yeah. tonight the Falcons, you know, I think Coach Jeffries is doing the wise thing, holding guys out who are a little banged yeah. up, holding guys out to try and get things healthy. So what is the science a little bit behind district seeding a little bit? You know, how – because I, I, I looked at the – looking at what Harding Fine Arts is playing because everybody's like, well, isn't there more than one? I mean, a lot of people get that confused. There's a Harding Charter Prep. Right. And there's a Harding Fine Arts uh, Charter Prep is taking on Douglas right now, right. Um, and, and, and they're not having much fun either. Well, here, yeah, here's the methodology <laughs> behind it. But so district play. L- low seeds take on high seeds. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how that works. And then uh, – But you have to win enough games to be – or win the right district games right. to at least get to that point. Right, oh, and, and or ranking. So, and then after that, when we go to regionals, that's when you begin to really see things level out. They'll still have a seeding system that's in place. You'll still have those higher-ranked teams, which will be seeded against lower-ranked teams. And then, of course, as you begin to travel down the road, you begin to see these teams become a little bit more evenly matched all the way through the area and then into, into state. Right. So, again, the next phase of this is district, regional, area. area state. Then, then it's the right. state tournament. Right, and that's you'll begin to see teams drop out and, and lose, and that, that's the key. Of course, we got to remember that you got to lose twice. Once you get past this stage and you go into regionals, it's a double elimination. You, if you lose a game, you do have the opportunity to come up through the loser's bracket. Um, so if you lose one early and you went out, you, you continue to advance. You get to the big house. It's just that you got the long road. The longer road, an extra game, an extra yeah. day of games. So the Falcons overall record is 11 and 10. They're going to look to go to 12 and 10. So the Falcons seeding, they're still ranked number two folks in class 2A. And if you still have not heard this before, 20 games played by the Falcons have been against non-class 3A competition. 4A, 5A, 6A teams. So the Falcon team has really been battle tested and we'll see if if this idea of what they've had to go through, Gary, will pay off in the playoffs for them. Yeah, they get a lot of credit in the in the rankings for strength of schedule. Um, and, of course, that is something that's been well established by the Falcons for 40 years. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you know, when other teams that are in Class 2A, they're out playing, you know, in, in against smaller teams with the exception of Dale. Um, and everybody else, they're pretty much playing in their class, and, and you may see better records, but they're not playing against better competition. So if you are, uh, you know, we start talking about Coach Jeffries, I think he comes back out with the starters one more time, and we get to see, you know, see, the, see those guys play again for a little bit of time. Yeah. They're, 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 or, 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 or do you stagger? It looks like he's staggering it a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he – that, yeah, he has Bubba and has White out on the floor. Um, they, he kept Mays in. Again, he's trying to manage to prevent injury. We got players out right now. Jay Nick is out. With, he's sore. Zaire is out. He's sore and some others. Um, and so this is just really for the normal starters. This is to keep them tuned up. They're not out there to, to stat up or anything like that. They're just out there to ensure that the offense is ran. Uh, and executed appropriately and to stay sharp. All right, so who is on the floor? So we've got Kelston Young, Mark Presley, Dominic White, Chance Davis. We're missing somebody. Oh, it's right. Uh, there he is. We got Moore. Jamari Moore was on the floor. 
All right, going to get called for steps, putting the ball down goes Cornell Cannon. But if you're the Falcons, you come out, execute again. That's yeah, what you do. yeah, yeah. You, you still want to see a high level of play. You want to see things executed. You, whoa, look at there. Presley tries to get to the basket. not able to get it to fall. He's going to call you. a jump ball situation. Surprised he didn't get called for the push off. I, I like Presley's game. Mm -hmm. I like his Presley's game. He likes to be physical on the block, doesn't mind, and likes to play through contact And as he well. makes some really nice moves to the basket. I think the biggest thing with him is just finishing. Uh, and like I said, having that confidence, and a lot of it comes with just simply playing. Three-point I mean, shot knocked down there by Hudson that time. These younger players played quite a bit. I don't necessarily always know if they've played against uh, the best competition in the world. But, you know, again, these guys are – you know, they've played, and, and there's a lot of promise out here on the floor with these younger guys as well. Dominic Weich goes to the basket. You see that angle that Weich, you know, we, was talk, we were talking about that earlier, how the angles are slightly off. He really needs to, to take just one more half a step in, maybe one dribble, and, and, and really elevate at his height. He should be able to get up towards the glass. I think that's interesting that you bring that up as Dominic knocks down the first one. He's he's a tall kid, been the tallest kid on the floor. Yeah. When you're tall, you just go up. You, you don't just think go about up. right. <laughs> you right. don't think yeah. about positioning. Yeah, he but given the fact that, you know, he's on the low block, positioning is everything when you're playing in the low post. All right. So turnover. Throwing the ball away that time, trying to get the ball. Again, beating the press. Turnover that time by Hudson. Six forty six to go in the third. 48 to 12, Falcons in control. Just want to see how the Falcons are going to finish this thing. Right wing, Chance Davis. Inside I mean, to Presley. Presley can't get it to fall that time. I mean, they're getting the ball into the low post with ease. And then with the runner, shot there by Williams, no good. Oh. And, and Fine Arts gets it back and then tries to score the basket, drawing contact, and that's a foul. Going to be a foul that time on Presley. So that's team foul number two. So. So the first shot is up. Back rims no good there by Williams. Carlos Strong checks into the game. So Strong comes in for Presley. Yeah, and see, now you're going to see... <laughs> Very few misses in the low post now that Strong is in the game. So that particular time, Williams gets the shot to fall. 48-13. Here comes Chance Davis, fires it to the right wing to Kelston Young. Dominic White on the block looking for it. Chance Davis looks at a three. Moore, stutter steps, drives inside, showing his sweet feet, can't get it to fall. Moore once again fighting on the block. Working the ball around to Kelston Young, dump down. To Dominic White, handoff to Kelton Young, back up top to Strong. That's, Strong. Some, that's some pretty good defense play by Harding there. As they've but, gone to, it looks like a 2-1-2 zone, and on the inside going to catch Carlos Strong and turn the ball over, 48-13. That's a good defensive possession for Harding. So working the ball around up top, Greer hands off to Williams, to Gary Williams, giving him the hands of Cannon, who drives to the basket Strong, and he's able to score. Not so a bad move. 48-15. Kelston Young fires it over to Chance Davis, and they're going to catch Chance Davis for steps that time. So substitution. Moore comes out of the game. When Presley, when I first looked down from, uh, from this high up and saw Presley, I thought it was Davis. If you, look, if you look at their hair, it looks it very, looks very similar. Dominic White oh, and with the steal dunk. and the slam on the other end. Dominic White's doing a little bit of everything yeah, tonight. Look at there. Showing his vertical game. Bubba Puts Davis the gets up. a steal. Look like it might be with another opportunity. For and this time. Two more for White. So White gets the two assists from Chance Davis. White got 16 points. Inside. High Rebound, shot, no good. Strong. Rebound by Strong. Strong fires it up to Davis. Davis goes to the basket. Contact on his back. Uh, he gets called for steps. Oh, they're going to call out. Chance Davis for a turnover there. Yeah. 
he was assisted with a push in the back. Well, he had a moment. He had a Ja Morant moment where, you know, he. Okay, that's a double dribble. Okay. So, Greer going to turn the ball over. 52-15. 4.43 to go. Chance Davis taking his time now. Coming across the timeline. 3-2 zone being played. Ball in the hands of White. Allowing a right wing three-point shot. No good. Rebound put back Presley. by Presley. Stolen. So stolen that time by Knight again. And Knight gets the steal and the deal. 56-15, 4 7 to go. Hitting him with the steps. A little drop step there. Basket attempt by Daniel Hudson. Yeah, they're going to call that on, on uh, White. White, yeah. So team foul number three, foul situation three to one right now. So Hudson to the free throw line, shooting two. Hudson front rims on his first free throw attempt. So Dewan Vaughn comes in. And Jamari Moore returns as Dominic White comes out, as well as Chance Davis. Second free throw goes down, 56-15, Falcons up by 40. That Four is. minutes to go in the third. Ball up top. Carlos Strong trying to settle up in the middle. Somebody got to get, get, the, get the hungry man a spot. Moore. Devon. Presley brought it down. It's going to end up the ball getting tied up. Yeah, he and it will be Falcon basketball. He mishandled it a little bit. <clears throat> so Presley to inbound now. Tries to bounce pass it in, but Donovan Knight gets it back. So Vaughn over to Knight. Carlos Strong saying, what do I have to do to get the ball? Right. All right, working the ball around. There now Carlos Strong has it. Has and power gained nope. to the basket. He's blocked. But Moore ends up with the change and scores it. Nice job by Moore being Johnny on the spot. On the other end, driving inside goes Greer. Greer shot going to be blocked. Yeah, or but contact's going to be fouled on Carlos Strong. Foul. Foul His first foul of the night, 3.08 to go. So Greer back at the line with two shots. Spins. Shot is up and down. For Greer, 58-17, 3.08 to go. Two for two at the free throw line goes Greer. 58-18. Still a 40-point lead by the Falcons. Duan Vaughn doing work above the circle. Gets it over to Knight. Knight has his pass deflected. Ends up in the hands of Carlos Strong, who gets it to Vaughn on the box. He can't score it. Chipped out. Vaughn kicks it back out to Moore. Ball fake. Vaughn shoots a corner three-point shot. And he makes it. String music for Vaughn. Assist by Jamari Moore. Stutter stepped to the basket. Got there late. I don't wow. know how he got that one to go. But Hudson gets it to fall again. 61-20. So Moore tries to finish. Gets up in the air. A little bit out of control on that one. Can't get the shot to fall. Rebound, the foul. Oh, that's a double dribble. Driving to the basket, strong. Rebound pulled down by Moore. Here comes Knight, who kicks it. Carlos Strong steps. Oh, my goodness. Carlos shoots a, shoots a three point shot and it's going to be <laughs> deflected hey, out of hey, bounds. That's when you know, right? I mean, Carlos Strong never takes a three point shot, but he took one tonight. So, William Mays returns to the game and Carlos Strong comes out. 
So Kelston Young also comes to the game. And Jamari Moore comes out as well. 61 20, 159 to go. Ball up top. Kelston Young now has it. Young over to Vaughn. Vaughn, who just knocked a three point shot down. Knight, right wing to Young. Young to the baseline to Presley, who cuts it, who gets it to a cutting yeah, to the he basket. Wasn't Donovan quite Knight. ready for that Presley pass. So it's going to be Firehawk basketball in the tie up. Got a timeout. So a timeout is here on the floor. Timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. So far in the period, Fine Hearts has actually put up some points this period. It's 15 to 11 overall. I mean, they you, you're talking about a team that's actually put has came out with some more firepower in the second half, at least trying to organize and do a better job of attacking and breaking the press by the Falcons and they've done that. Yeah. Gary overall, but the Falcons still have been you know, the Falcons have been staggering their starters, so it's not as if they're doing work against the starting no, five. No, no. They're doing it against a team of freshmen, right. primarily freshmen and, and JV starters for the Falcons overall mm -hmm. in the second half here. We've seen staggered play. William Mays a little bit. Yep. Chance Davis here a little bit. A little bit of Carlos Strong, but not and, all of them together. Right, right. And, 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 and so you get things like Carlos Strong shooting a three-point shot, or you get William Mays passing on easy buckets because he's trying to – you know, make sure that these younger players get the opportunity to shoot the ball more. Same thing holds true with, with Bubba Davis, the Bubba Chance Davis. He's he's not taking shots. I mean, he, these guys are working the ball around, just making sure that the offensive set is, is aligned and that, you know, everyone knows their job. Back to live action. Here we go. So Fine Arts will have the ball. The Falcons have pulled back, so not extending pressure anymore. So 144 to go. Ball in the hands now of to Gary Williams. Man, every time you say his name, I just – it's rare to hear a kid's name, a kid named Gary. <laughs> it really is. I mean, they don't they don't name kids Gary anymore unless he's a junior or something, <laughs> or the third. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not on the top of the per parental no, no, list. No, no, it's, no. It's, 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 it's a name list. It's just a good old fashioned all American name. Is, is that what that is? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay, shot up by Hudson is no good that time. Rebound pulled down by Mays. So Dwan Vaughn steps into a three-point shot. He's not able to get it to fall on the other end. But rebound pulled down by Donovan Knight. Kelston Young, ball fakes, drives inside. Nice dump down, and Presley wasn't ready again. Yeah. Again, Presley has to keep in mind to keep your hands up. Right, especially when you're down in the block and they're penetrating. I mean, that dime can come from anywhere. So Presley comes out and then coming, returning to the game is White. Dominic White. So the Falcons are picking up half-court pressure now. Turn Ball on. knocked loose by White. Ball's going to be stolen Tied by up. Mays. It's going to be a tie-up situation. So Dominic White's getting, getting credit for the steal, at least by, in my book. But it will be a tie-up, and it will be Falcon basketball. So now... So Mark Presley is in the game. So somebody else came out. Got to see who that was. So I guess it was Donovan Knight who came oh, out of that one. Wow. Trying to find some space to operate. Back up top goes Cannon. Cannon over to Williams. Over to Webb. Webb drives into the lane. Shot is blocked. Swatted away by Mark Presley. Oh, nice feed by William. So White. Uh, call White for travel. We'll call White for a travel there. Eight point nine seconds to go in the third. So Jamari Moore comes in for Kelston Young. So they're going to say the ball is still with the Falcons with 8.9 seconds to go. The officials got together and changed it. So Mark Presley to inbound. Throws it back up top to Mays with 8 on the clock. Mays. Oh, Inside with nice. a beautiful pass and to And then Dominic White, White. Misses the he misses the bunny. You know, that's, the, that's, that's, that's what we're talking about right there. You know, just 
just, you know, having, you know, being aware, playing at a faster pace, executing at a high level. William, even though he's not shooting, is still playing at a very high level in terms of his assist game and his defensive play Time. while teaching the younger players. Time for us to hit a break as we get ready to start the fourth on just the other side. You're listening to Millwood Basketball brought to you by Super Prep. We'll be right back. Oklahoma City. I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to listen to my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. All right, taking a look at the numbers in the second half, Gary, the Falcons overall have shot 6 of 16, 38%. 2 of 2 from the free throw line in the second half of this game, 100%. 1 of 5, only 20%. But yet they still lead, you know, by a substantial amount, 41 points overall. So you can't really complain about what you're seeing from the overall numbers. But, you're, you're again, you want the team to finish and play strong here as we get ready to tip off the fourth. Yeah, so... My coaching brain right now is telling me travel. So my coaching brain is telling me in a game like this is as I evaluate and look at younger players, I'm trying to catch someone doing something good, right, doing something the right way. And then also, too, if there's a player that's, you know, like, for instance, White, you know, kind of missing a few bunnies underneath the basket, those, those are opportunities for correction um for him too because, much pepper on the pass by presley it will be a turnover here because he plays a, a considerable amount of minutes with the varsity and so going into next week <laughs> you know those are all things that that you know you really need to work on nicely william done. mays with the steal mark presley finishes on the other end he gets the steal he gets the assist you know you could just definitely see those transitions happening just very, very rapidly with Mays in the game. Three-point nice shot. shot by Greer. Nice shot by Greer. So gets the lead back down to 40, 63 to 23. Working the ball around. Vaughn has it up top to the left wing. Moore steps into a three-point shot. Can't get it to fall. White tries to track it down. And then stepping on the end line, it will be, be, it will be Falcon basketball there. Yeah, that was a uh, more took a shot there, didn't draw any rim. Inbound pass to Vaughn on the right wing. Vaughn at, at the top of the key. Throws it inside to Mays. Mays on the block, works it around to Presley. Presley with the jumps, jump stop, jump shot. Moore with a good rebound. And Moore gets the rebound. Moore has 12. Dominic White with 18. Then Euro into the lane. They call travel. Travel on Greer again. You know, I, I literally heard boom, boom. You know, in terms of steps, I didn't, I didn't thought, I didn't think you think you think you travel. Well, again, what you see at the NBA level, that Euro, you're able to get with that two, sometimes three. Oh, they're step. doing they're, they're every bit of three steps in yeah. the NBA. Yeah. yeah. So, but when we talk about here on this particular end, I think if you get a clean two, but some officials are very consistent on they don't allow the euro in high school ball no yeah, okay they just they just they don't just let don't let it. they, they just, just don't, don't let, let it, it fly yeah kelston young for three shot no good Moore tries to chase it down and able to do so 65 23 609 left in the game so trying to work it around ball pressure by white Ball this is going to be thrown pass. out by the Firehawks. Good ball pressure by White, forcing the turnover. And again, White tonight has really been the one who had the most, I think, the most to gain yes. tonight. Yes, yes. No, he, he is on display, um, and he is definitely of the players that, that we're seeing. And White nice. with the short corner jump yeah, shot. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's what – if he – 
if he plays – almost gets a steal. So, if he plays half as well, right, we don't necessarily need him to come in and shoot 20 points. But yeah, if he, he can come in and give us eight and give us, you know, five rebounds, um, you know, down the stretch, that's, that's wonderful. That's right. definitely wonderful in terms of his contribution to the team. And for what you're talking about tonight in terms of stats tonight – uh, from Dominic Weich. I mean, you're looking at a stat line right now. He has a 20-piece as it stands right now. Six rebounds and two steals overall tonight. Yeah. Now, in a varsity game, you know, in terms of what we've seen, he overshot it. In, in terms of what we've seen um, from him, you know, he got 20 tonight, but in a typical game, he's normally around four. You know, and so we're trying to get his – we're trying to get his uh, – I see William Moore is just – I mean, William Mays just absolutely refuses to shoot the ball. Driving inside, and they're going to call offensive foul, I think, on Dominic Weich. Trying to set that screen. Mm -hmm. Moving it just a little bit too much. Moving screen. So the foul situation, five team fouls for the Falcons, two team fouls for the Firehawks, Harding Fine Arts Academy. Ball deflects off the hands of Greer. William Mays fired a bullet pass on the other end to Kelston Young. Well, you know William what? William Mays showing the vision. Yep, he's showing that football athleticism, an IQ. And then he comes back down and steals another ball. So driving to the basket goes Presley. Rebound by Weiss. Weiss can't get it to fall. William steals it again. I think this time he's going to put it off the glass. Uh, well, so they're going to call Kelston Young for steps there. Kind of frantic few seconds there. Right. So, so I'd like to wish a congratulations to uh, William Mays as well as Iverson McElwee. They actually signed their letters of intent to attend uh, the – Missouri Valley University there in uh, this great state of Missouri. So they'll be playing football there this in the fall. All right. Shot by. Congratulations to both those young men as yep. Moore tries to take it and go coast to coast on the other end. Can't get his shot to fall. Gets his own rebound. Gets it over to White. Back up top to Kelton Young. Ball fakes. Drops inside. Shot on the runner Nicely is done. good. Nicely done. Yeah, Maurice, um, you know, William had, and Iverson both, you know, they, they had a lot of small school officers. Jump ball. They had a lot of turnover. Yeah, possession meal. Yeah, he had, uh, they, they both had a lot of, of schools come in and recruit them and offered them. And they elected to stay together as teammates and go and play in Missouri. Bubba Davis. Chance Davis from, from deep. From, like, beyond NBA Land. He just couldn't resist. He, he probably looked to the sideline and said, Coach, let me shoot it. Shooting foul call number 24. 74-23, 336 left in the game. So, 74-23. Chance Davis comes in and instantly makes an impact. Chance Davis with a quiet 15 points. <laughs> Real quiet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Four Falcons, as I can see at the moment, in double-digit scoring. Comes in for Don Donovan Knight, comes in for Dominic Weich. So you got Donovan Knight, Kelston Young, Chance Davis, Mark Presley, and Jamari Moore on the floor right now. Shot up, and it is good for Cornell Cannon. Three thirty-six to go in the contest. One more by Cannon. Shot is up. Misses Front the rim's no good. Wow. Right now, Falcons leading by 50. So working the ball around back up top. Moore to the corner. Kelston Young. Tries to bounce it, but it bounces off the shoe of Israel Manuel. Goes out of bounds, so it will be Falcon basketball right here at the scorer's table. Mark Presley to inbound, and he gets it into Chance Davis. Moore to the corner. Kelston Young. 
Fires it back up top to Davis. Davis lets go another three-point shot. No good. Rebound by Moore. Picks up the change and drops it in. You know, there's something else, too, that, that um, I want to talk about. Oh, turnover by Harding. Falcons have the ball. And then Presley, Presley gets. drains it, yep. 78-24. So you did see the game between Weatherford and Anadarko, right? Or see it reported on, right? Of course. Yeah, 4-2. to two. That's another thing that <laughs> if, if I'm – if I'm the Falcons coach, and I'm hoping that he – I'm sure he's probably not going to go back and look at the tape of this game unless he's just evaluating players a second time. But I'll say it for the listeners. If you're not used to holding the ball or getting in a situation where you can play some stall ball, you better consider it <laughs> going into the playoffs this year because that weatherford Anadarko game ended in a score of 4-2. to two. An entire game played. And so I'm not saying that it's going to be that extreme, but I do believe that this might be a year where holding the basketball is going to be a tactic that is going to be deployed. Well, it, it, we always see it in final minutes in contests. Sure, in final minutes, yes. It, you know, in the final stages of games, it is a common, common ploy. Jamari Moore gets called for the foul there. That's team foul number seven. So but, it's going to put him at the first half. But, but, but I believe, Mo, is it's going to be a strategy for some teams when you start getting into playoffs since we don't have a shot clock uh, in high school here well, in the state of also, Oklahoma. Well, also, it also depends on how deep these teams are because there are other ways to get around that. But as you said, it being employed, it breaks the rhythm of the team. Right. And so that means you have to be consistent on your execution on your offensive possessions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to try and limit that in the first half of play to a team having the ball for three or four possessions, that's going to be a difficult, difficult thing to do in the playoff scenarios. Now, it also depends on the coaching styles of both teams. You know, pressing. Do you have the dribblers? Do you have the ball handlers that, and the IQ level? As Chance Davis lets go another three-pointer from the wing. He shoots the ball and then looks to the sideline. <laughs> like, sorry, coach. Yeah, like I might be in trouble. 149 to go in the contest. 81-24. Working the ball around. Bounce pass inside to Manuel. Manuel. Ball's knocked loose. Presley ends up with the steal that time. Gets it over to Moore, and Moore goes to the basket strong. He, he can't get it, it to fall. But a lot of things, you know, Gary, in terms of that situation, if it's if it's similar coaching philosophies, you know, where we're playing for possession, that situation, I, I, it's not an anomaly because we have seen downscore games, you know, overall. Sure, sure, sure. we have. But, yeah. but, but, to uh, to for example, doing that against the Falcons, as Chance Davis steps into another three point shot, shot no good that time, rebound, tried to put pull down by Presley, wasn't able to do so. But can you can you see a team executing that against the Falcons? That style of play. Yes, you can see it happen. Yes, I can see it happening. And if 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 Anna Darko in Weatherford can do that, and I'm not saying that it's going to be a a four two type game, but I do see scores coming down from I mean fifties down to like twenty nine thirty one. Well, Gary, we called a game that had that yeah. impact of that. When, you know, just a few weeks ago when the Falcons were up, we had to go to Langston to play a game, and we saw a game that did not offer as much firepower as we poss possibly had wanted it to. But we just, you know, but we just saw that just a couple of weeks ago when they took on OCS. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a game. I'm not saying no, OCS. OCS. Ada, Ada. Ada. Ada, yeah. Y yeah, but, but it, it's not like this. I, I think we're going to see – and one. Presley drives to the basket and draws a foul and scores the basket. I, I, I do think we're going to see attempts by some teams to hold the ball and shorten the game. Okay. But when and, I, and I'm talking about and shorten the point totals as well. Okay. Reduce you, the point okay, totals. You know, sh shorten the game, shorten yeah. possessions. Now, yeah. when I asked it, do I think it'll happen against other teams doing it to the Falcons, I didn't mean with a, with a coach – employ that as a strategy i bring that up 
is do you think it'll work against the Falcons? My it, it, it just depends. It, it just depends on what type of team you have and whether or not the Falcons are prepared for that. that that's my – that's my issue. I'm just – it's just for me – William Mays comes back in the game. Steal. I mean, he picked the guy's pocket, and then he gets the assist. And he's so much faster than the younger kids, right? He gives the assist, and, you know, they, they just can't handle the pass. I mean, so there's a clear difference. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is that if you're not practicing that, if you're not thinking about it, if you're not prepared for it, it could happen. I mean, I remember back in the – let's see, in the – was it might have been the 90s. I, oh, no, it wasn't the 90s. It was actually a Millwood versus Star Spencer game where Hopgood, Terry Evans was playing against Byron Houston. Mm -hmm. And it was a very low – it was like a 30 – it was like a 31 to 39 type game. Going to the basket and scoring that time was Greer. And and there's three, there's three four D1 guys on the floor, and we saw that tactic deployed. Contest is over, folks. 83 to 26 is how it winds up. We'll take a quick break, come down, and give you the final statistics and break it down, give you our player of the game. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by Super Prep. Homeland is Oklahoma's neighborhood grocery store, employee-owned and rooted in community. This week in Homeland, pick up great deals like Angus Beef Top Round Roast for only $3.99 a pound, and get fresh boneless chicken breasts for $1.99 a pound, catfish nuggets only 99 cents a pound, and get a five-pound bag of Idaho russet potatoes for $2.99. Find more ways to save at homelandstores.com. Homeland, your homegrown advantage. Let's get it down to PA announcer, Ivory Towns. These guys are the reigning three a state champion. And now we can call them the 2022-23 district champions. Make some noise for your mighty Millwood Falcons. So congratulations to Coach Michael Jeffries and the Millwood Falcons, 2022-2023 district champions. And they now advance to go play in the regional tournament that will be played in Jones next week. Um, details will be coming up soon. I do believe <coughs> that they play on Thursday, Gary. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't necessarily know who our opponent is going to be just yet. Right, right. Uh, that's to be determined. After tonight, everybody, right. all district. Everybody has to play. Yeah. Everybody's playing tonight, so district games are over and going on. Right. But to kind of finish up our conversation real quick while we get ready to get to the statistics mm -hmm. of tonight's contest, you brought up a point. My, my thing here is there are different things and strategies to employ and dare the other team to see if they're going to be disciplined. I'm not saying, Gary, that you're wrong. You've been coaching a long time, and <laughs> I'm not questioning whether someone can do it. But it requires a special team with the right talented players, with extreme ball skills, and the coach has to be in your head. Yeah. You know, yeah. for example, you were making a comment about Chance Davis shooting the three tonight. Right. He's looking over at Coach Jeffries. Right. Against, you know, when we start talking about Anna Darko and those other teams, they already know there's a nice spot for you right here next to me yeah. if you don't employ what we're trying to do. And it requires everybody to buy in. Yeah. Now, what I'm saying is in today's basketball, there are multiple ways to get to that point. Now, the Falcons may say, okay, I'm playing, I'm going 15 deep against a team like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to foul them to get us more possessions. If they can knock down all their free throws and they beat us, then you have done something in that stadium. I'm just saying as an idea, there are ways to get around it. What we witnessed there is two coaches who were bent on playing or or bent on playing their style of play mm -hmm. against each other. Right. And, I, you know, because at first I'm thinking to myself going, is this an agreement between guys? Yeah. Because I'm like, to only see a team with five or six possessions in the first half of a game, mm -hmm. not not in the first first few minutes. We we did this one here, and they we saw five possessions in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. So I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and when I made that comment about, Stall ball tactics moving forward need to be prepared for it. You need to probably, um, you know, practice it and, and have a strategy against it. I, I say that because, number one, we've never seen that before. 
No. You know, in terms of our state history, in terms of basketball game being one four to two, at least in recent history, let's just say thirty years. And then number number two, when the vote for the shot clock came up at OSSAA, it was voted down, despite what everybody thought, and some of the feedback that was. It was voted down because, in some instances, that is the only way that some of the smaller rural schools can compete with schools that are from the Metroplex because of the perceived disparity in talent. Mm -hmm. And that was done, and that was done intentionally, and they know why they've done it. So I say all that to, to say that that's a mechanism by which you level the playing field. If there is a shot clock and you got to shoot it and – 30 seconds or whatever the shot clock would have been in high school, then that changes it because that forces the number of possessions. But there are some teams out there who I guarantee you they are preparing, just like we run four-minute offenses in football, five Oh, minutes. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, there are some teams that are preparing to reduce the number of possessions, especially if they get a lead. Now, this is going to be one of the uh, best. So, everybody get buckle up. This is the best stat sheet you'll ever hear from a Falcon game <laughs> just because so many players play. Donovan Knight finished the night with five points, two assists, five rebounds, and three steals on the night. William Mays, six assists, five rebounds, six steals. <laughs> nasty, just a nasty yep. stat line from William Mays. It's really good. Kelston Young, 11 points, one rebound on the night. Uh, let's go down here. <clears throat> Chance Davis, 18 points, three assists, two steals overall. Donovan Knight, three points, uh, one assist, three rebounds, and three steals on the evening itself. Mark Presley, 10 points, one assist, seven rebounds, one block, two steals. Dominic Weich, 20, <coughs> excuse me, folks, 20 points, five rebounds, make that seven rebounds and two steals on the evening overall. Jamari Moore, 14 points, one assist, nine rebounds on the night for that young man, and one steal. Carlos Strong, two points, one assist, one rebound, and two steals overall on the night, Gary. Yeah, that sounds like a uh, Langston University stat line. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if anybody's been keeping up with that, but um, – you know, Langston University, they're such talented. They're 26-2. and two. They just won the, their conference up there. And that stat line looks like what they do week in and week out at the collegiate level. Outstanding play by the line – I mean, excuse me, by the Falcons. Yes. Um, younger players, a lot of them gotten a lot of opportunities to show what they can do. Some of them, because of some depth issues that we're having with the varsity – will be called into action. We know for sure that Whites will be one of them that yes. will see more minutes. And, again, you know, outstanding job, him having 20 points. Probably could have had 30 easily just if he would have made the bunnies. But, you know, he's showing steady progress along with some other players. Some players were going to be asking to just give us some minutes, you know, play right, good defense. Right, right, right. There are going to be other players like him that if we can get eight, points out of him and play good minutes, play good, play some good defense, rebound, then that goes a long way towards us making a, a, a march to the big house. All right, so if we had to choose a Falcon player of the game without question tonight, even though Jamari Moore has a actually had a great game, uh, and so did Chance Davis, it's going to go to Dominic White, yep. as you said before. Yep. Dominic White playing a complete game on both ends of the floor, and if he can give you, as you said, a quarter of what he gave you yeah. tonight in the playoffs, you guys have done it. Be listening for details as we will start our official playoff coverage of Millwood Falcon Sports all the way to the state tourney because that's where we fully expect the teams to be. Right? Right. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it out there like that. So we're going to wrap things up for tonight so you guys can have some of All-Star Saturday night, if you will. Mm -hmm. We saw some stars here. Now you can see some stars going on some other places. want to thank Stevie D for holding us down, our on-site producer, Bryshawn, and also our cameraman, Deshaun overall. <laughs> He's Gary. I'm Maurice, and we'll see you guys next week. This has been Millwood Basketball brought to you by Super Prep. Good night. Good night.